Welcome back to the Catnip Podcast. My name is Grace and today is Monday, July 22nd. This is a podcast about knitting books, baking, and cats, but most importantly knitting because that is what I love to do the absolute most, even when it is incredibly hot outside like it is today. Um, if you'd like to follow me on any of my social medias, I have Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Ravelry. Um, I'm most active at uh, most active almost said activated. I'm most active on Instagram if you'd like to go follow me over on there. Or if you'd like to follow any of the other things, that would be wonderful as well. Um, all the things that I will be talking about will hopefully be listed in the show notes, which will be on my blog. And if you're on my if you're on my blog, everything's already there. Or if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below in the down bar. Um, I just realized I forgot to put on my rings and we're just gonna deal with it. Um <laughs> I've waited too long today and I'm just needing to push through and record this. Um, rings or no rings. <sighs> Everyone, I have had a big knitting week. It's pretty, pretty awesome and I'm very excited to show it to you or show everything to you. Um, I have a book recommendation. I have a drink recommendation and I feel like there was something else that I was going to suggest. Oh, a movie recommendation. Um, so we have a full week this week. Lots of knitting, lots of other things. It's great. I hope it's not as hot where you are as it is here, because it is incredibly hot and the humidity is just insane. Um, it's to the point in the summer where like, we have to keep the blinds closed all day, every day, in order to help the air conditioner not overwork itself, because it's just so hot. We're also on the third floor, so that doesn't really help. But, closing the blinds, it just keeps everything dark and cool and a little bit more bearable when you're running around doing laundry and changing the kitty litter, as you do, of course. So, that being said, hopefully you are enjoying some cool air conditioning where you are. Um, if you like to go grab something tasty to drink, whether it be hot or cold, if it's hot, more power to you. I am not doing that today. Um, or something tasty to snack upon, or an animal to snuggle, or anything to craft upon, or all of the above, and or laundry, <laughs> you can come back and join me for some crafty chat. <laughs> So, right off the bat, because um, we on the subject of drinking delicious things, we're going to do the drink recommendation right now. I literally just made this batch of iced tea, because why not? Um, it is, uh, it was a very random thing. Um, I was getting groceries today, groceries today, you know, at um, the HEB, because we love our HEBs here in Houston. Um, and I saw this uh, in the tea aisle because I randomly like to go down the tea aisle even if I don't need any tea because I like looking to see if there's anything fun that I might need. <laughs> <clears throat> Things that I might need that I don't realize that I need until I see them. I know I'm not the only one who does this when it comes to grocery stores. But, so I was walking down the tea aisle. <laughs> <laughs> the point being, I was in the tea aisle, and I saw this Lipton green tea orange passion fruit jasmine, which is a mouthful of a name, but oh my goodness, it's delicious. It's so good. Um, I'm sure it would be very good hot, but as an iced tea, it's very refreshing. I put like a teaspoon of sugar in it when I put the hot water in, and then I put a little bit of honey in it when I... Um, poured myself glass after I was done making it. Um, and it's so good. It's very refreshing. Um, yeah, I just used, I followed the instructions on the side because yay for making iced tea. Um, anyway, I would highly recommend this. It's very good. Probably found at your local grocery store, whatever that may be. I know not everybody has HEBs, which I am very sorry for you. Um, but yes, I would highly recommend you trying that out and making iced tea if that's your your thing, if you enjoy that. Um, it is very good. And it's going to give me some caffeine, which is great. And it's going to kind of keep me hydrated, which is also good. And it's not, like, terribly bitter. It's delicious. So, would highly recommend... 
Lipton green tea, orange passion, orange passion fruit, jasmine. They also had a peach mango one that I didn't get, but I want to try next time. You know, next time I'm wandering down the tea aisle for no particular reason. I like tea, what can I say? <laughs> so everybody, let's move on to knitting, the actual content of this podcast. I do apologize for the delay. Uh-oh, what was that? Something fell and I don't know what it was, but nothing has been spilled, so that's all that really matters. Um, I have a finished object, everybody, and oh my goodness, I am so proud of this finished object. Um, <laughs> so last week, I showed you, I think I showed you my nurtured sweater. I believe I did, because I remember putting it in the show notes. So I showed you my nurtured sweater, which is by Andrea Mowry. It's a cropped, very heavyweight, or worsted weight, I shouldn't say it's not heavy, heavyweight, but you know what I mean. It's heavy for right now. It's very heavy for right now. Um, and so... That was going to be my next languishing whip in progress um, because I had just finished using my size 8s for a test knit and so I just immediately put them into my nurture sweater because I knew that would help me get it done. And everybody, it did. Because I have a finished sweater. Like, I finished this sweater... Granted, my, my sleeves were already done. I was just knitting the body and then doing all the, the raglan decreases. Because it's bottom up. Everybody, oh my goodness. I love this sweater. I love this pattern. I want to make more. I want to make more now. But will I? Probably not. But that's okay. I will eventually do that. <laughs> um, I have tried it on. And... Even though I was wearing my jammies at the time when I finished it, it still looked cute. And I wouldn't normally be wearing this with my jammies unless I was lounging around the house. But for picture purposes, I would not be wearing my jammies normally. So the fact that it looked cute with my jammies, or pajamas as some people would want to call them, but I call them jammies, so whatever. Um, if you were confused, that's what I call them. Um, things you didn't necessarily need to know about me. Um, the fact that it looks cute with them is a good sign for this sweater. It's like the perfect cropped for me. I am so excited to take pictures for it, except I probably, I really don't know when that will happen because it is so hot outside and I'm not really wanting to take pictures in jeans and a uh, worsted weight sweater with long sleeves. That just sounds terrible. Like that just really, really, I cannot express to you how bad that sounds. <laughs> um, that being said, I could potentially take pictures inside because there's AC. Because all of our blinds are closed, of course, like I mentioned before. And so things are a little bit better and a little bit more cool, you know. Um, yes. So this is very exciting. This will go towards my stash dash. This will also be my first languishing whip and big languishing whip for July. This will also go towards my sweater amount for the year, which is very unofficial and just kind of piddling along as we go. Um, so yeah, I'm super happy with it. I, uh, didn't really set any kind of goal or any expectation to finish it last week, but I did. Um, I think once I got to a point where I knew it was possible to finish, I was like, I'm gonna finish it. So I stayed up late last night and I finished it and it was really great. Late, like 10.30. Just go to bed too early and it's, you, just, you just get tired around 9.45 or 10. It's just late but I wanted to get my sweater done. <laughs> priorities people you gotta have your priorities <laughs> you know knitting is a priority you have knitting sleep than anything else in this particular situation anyway 
Again, it's the Nurture Sweater by Andrea Mowry, knit out of worsted weight. It's cropped. You don't have to make it cropped. It's amazing. I want to make more. Also, as a sign of how languishing, absolutely languishing this whip is, on my patterns, if I print them, I've had a, I started a habit of writing the date um, that I cast the project on, and upon looking closely at the pattern, I realized that I cast, I, I cast it, I cast it on on Christmas Day, 2018, which is not like two Christmases ago, it's just this past Christmas, but it was still at Christmas, so it's now done. My languishing whip for July is done, and it's a big one. Because for real, like I had, I don't even remember how much of the body I had done, if any. Had I even started the body? I don't even know. No, I had to have started the body. Yeah. I I have this very bad habit now of not remembering what I told you guys last week. Or the previous week. Which is really bad. You think I would remember because I, I record it, I edit it, I make the show notes, so I should remember what I would have talked about. I just remember the progress, I guess. But anyway, the point is, is that I have a finished sweater, and the sweater is done. Languishing Whip is done. Stash Dash is, like, doing really great. Oh, I still have to seam the armholes. And the ends need to be woven in, and it needs to be blocked, but I finished it last night, so. I finished it last night for the purpose of, like, recording today and having a finished object to show you. You know? Also, I apologize, my bangs are really not cooperating, and I'm sorry that I keep playing with it, but it is unavoidable. 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 So. So that's my, the, my big thing for this week. Um, my other big thing, um, I, ha I don't think I showed this to you last week, but I have made significant progress on this. And this is another test knit, my only test knit at the moment, and if you've been watching, if you've been watching my podcast at all this year, you would think that that was a, quite a shock. Because <laughs> normally I have more than one test knit going. Um, but I just recently finished my Jensen pullover for um, Rachel of September Knits, which is absolutely amazing. And another sweater that I really want to make like 5,000 of, which is obviously an exaggeration, but I want to make at least one or two more. Um... The Moon Drip Swancho is now done. It's out. You can go buy the pattern. Please go do the pa go buy the pattern. It's amazing. It's so much fun. I ah, like it's just so wonderful. Tristan did a wonderful job. Tristan of Dragon Horde Designs. She released the pattern while she was at SSK this past weekend and there's the cat. He has emerged from his little hidey hole. Um and so yeah, the pattern is available now if you have been wanting to knit it, if you've been watching me knit mine for a long time, because <laughs> it's been a long time, um, you can go get that pattern now, which is very exciting. So this test knit that I'm working on is for Beatrice um, of Thread and Ladle. This is the Stash Buster Pullover. Um, I have obviously not divided for the sleeves yet, but I am coming up upon that soon, which is exciting. Um, and yeah, so it's a good just stash buster moving along. I, literally what I am doing is I have a big bag full of a color palette that I like, and I'm just picking colors as I go. So. That is the method to my mad my color madness. Um, and yeah. It's super fun to knit. I'm knitting it on size 6. I'm using mostly fingering weight. Um, but I have gauge. So that's all that really matters in the end. Yes, I did check gauge. After I had stored, started, of course. <laughs> because that's how I do things. Um, <clears throat> I think there will be some uh, doctoring with the neckline. Um, which will be quite interesting. I have never done what we are going to be doing 
or what I will be doing anyway. Some of us are having problems with the neckline being too like high up and so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up where we do like the fit and just cut that and knit from there. So I've never done that before. That sounds really kind of scary but I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. <laughs> um, so yes, this is my stash buster pullover test knit moving forward. I feel like I've been working on this in bursts. Like sometimes like I will not work on it at all and other times I'll be like this is all I'm working on. Ya no. Um, but uh, this has not been worked on in maybe a week which is fine. Um, but should probably continue working on it. We have a, a deadline in the middle of August, I believe, um, but the deadline is very flexible, so I'm not worried. Plus, once I divide for the sleeves, the, the stitches are, it's gonna go down significantly, and it'll be great. Um, this will put me at, fun fact, um, this was very incredible and I had not realized where I was in the count of my sweaters. Let's talk about the unofficial sweater count quickly. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, on Saturday, um, I was, uh, at work and I forgot to mention all that stuff at the beginning of the episode, so I apologize. But if you are new, I work at a yarn store. It's called The Modern Skein. It's in Montgomery, Texas. All of that stuff will be in the show notes. Um... All that jazz. Also, I have a friend who opened a yarn store in Waco named Trico. It's amazing. I have not been there. Um, but please go and visit her if you are in the area. Because I I would really want to go and you should visit it for me. Also, Allison is a wonderful human being and I wish her all the best. Um, what was it? Uh, at work, obviously, at the at the yarn store. I was there with uh, one of the other girls who works with me, Julie, um, and we were discussing sweaters, and we counted up all of our sweaters, and we both have enough sweaters to kind of around get 12 sweaters for the year. And I might have a couple more than that, because this one is going to be number 12. And obviously this one has to get done because it's a test knit. So I'm for sure getting the 12 sweaters done. Um, so we decided that now it's my goal to see how many sweaters I actually can do in a year. Because I have at least three or four more languishing whips or sweater projects and yarn to make sweaters that could potentially, no promises, I'm not promising to do this, but I'm just giving you the information that we figured out. I have enough yarn to make, sw enough, a what? I have yarn to make a total of 18 sweaters this year. And that just sounds absolutely insane. Like that just sounds crazy. But I would not have thought that I would have been able to knit 12 sweaters in seven months. Like, what the poop? How did that happen? Granted, it, uh, a few of them, maybe four of them, five of them. So I know that seven of them are were test knits. And that includes this one. So... That lee means that three of them were languishing whips, which I think is accurate. Oh, and now we have the nurture sweater. So four of them have been languishing whips. Um, so uh, you could say that I hadn't really knit like all of them, like officially, like from start to finish in one span of time because four of them were in fact languishing whips, so I didn't do as much knitting in that span of time. But also seven of them have been test knits, which is from start to finish in that span of time. So if this is not an argument for deadlines, I don't know what is. I would give myself deadlines, but I really hate doing that. 
<laughs> also, I am not going to enforce them really. I might say that I will, but I won't actually, you know. So, um, there's no promises that I am finishing 18 sweaters in 2019. I could try for 19 sweaters because that just seems crazy because it's 2019. That makes sense. I'm not doing that. That was more of a joke. You know, that's that's a joke. That's probably not happening. 18 probably isn't happening either. But this is number 12. I've knit 12 sweaters, almost 12 sweaters in seven months. A lot of them were fingering weight. How does this happen? I don't know how this happened. People, how did this happen? <laughs> you tell me, how did this happen? So, consequently, since I finished my um, nurture sweater, I pulled out my next languishing whip sweater, which is my Zweig. Um, because I am conflicted about my no frills and I'm not going to discuss it today just because I'm not sure and I don't want to make any commitments and yeah. Anyway. Also these are interchangeables and once I get this done I can put them back. Oh yes. Okay. This is my Zweig. This is a uh, design by Caitlin Hunter. Um, this was my birthday cast on this year. So this has been on the needle since February 15th. Fun fact, that's my birthday. <laughs> um, and I am clearly on the home stretch. Because um, as we have said before, Sleeve Island can turn into Sleeve Paradise. When you have those nine inch circulars, forget Sleeve Island, it's paradise. I'm currently on Body City, which Julie coined that phrase. Um, I also have my lovely little Sucre Sucre Miniatures Pepperoni Pizza Slice, which, if you know me or if have been watching the podcast long, you would know that I would very readily commit to eating pizza for breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the rest of my life, because I just love pizza that much. Which is really awesome that I have a progress keeper. So, I I really am pretty close to finishing this. Will I make the commitment now to finish this by the end of the week? I don't know. <laughs> Who have I become? I don't know. <laughs> I also don't know why I find this so funny. It's just kind of ridiculous, uh, really. Um, so it maybe it's the thing that I don't, I can't overthink it because I didn't overthink the nurture sweater. It literally just kind of happened. So maybe if I just kind of tootle along and knit as much as I can on this thing, then I will somehow finish the whole sweater, which like would be literally insane. Will I do it? I don't know. Tune in next time to see if I finish my Zweig by Caitlin Hunter. Um, this is knit out of Madeline Tosh and Malabrigo. Um, the main body is Malabrigo in the Cordovan color <laughs> or Cordovan, Cordovan, whatever you want to call it. We've had this discussion before. Um, and then this is the Madeline Tosh in the Marfa colorway. And I am kind of imitating uh, one that is like my absolute favorite. She has a similar main body and a similar like contrasting color. It's not the same. Um, I think the one I like, she used Woolen Boon. And she might have used Malabrigo. I don't remember. But this is kind of like the same general idea. I saw hers and I was like, oh, <gasps> I think it was cropped and she was wearing it with a high-waisted skirt and you know me like once I see it that way I am sold sold anyway um I don't know I need to re look at the pattern and see where I am in the length of the body I don't remember what I had decided to do whether I was gonna do it cropped or not 
I will be doing the sleeves probably around here, I think. So bracelet-ish length. I guess that might be bracelet, I don't know. Right here, kind of, three quarters. That would be three quarters, like a little bit lower. <laughs> the details, details. Um, that was very technical, you know, just doing this on my arm. Um, so, that is my new sweater work in progress for the week. Um, also, quick side note before we move on to my last work in pro progress project. I always want to say project instead of progress. I don't know why, but first let's take a little mango, no, green tea, orange, passion fruit, jasmine break. <laughs> say that ten times fast. So, um, the, another thing that was kind of motivating me to get the, <clears throat> excuse me, the nurtured sweater done, because I'm going to use those needles, um, my mom and I took advantage of the nitpick sale, which I don't believe is going, still going on, but it could be, I don't know. It's 20% off their entire site. Um, that's the deal that we got. It's truly amazing, and so we um, are going to be making the Oban, 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 how many times can I say it the exact same way, but it seems different, um, the Oban Cardigan by Thea Coleman, um, and let's see. This is on her Instagram. There are so many beautiful pictures of this sweater that all the testers did. Oh my goodness, there are so many beautiful ones that the testers did. I want to like make all of them in all the colors. But this is what it is ultimately. It's a fisherman's cabled sweater gloriousness. There we go, it's a little bit better. Not as glary. Um, slight shawl collar, cables everywhere pockets cannot go wrong like I'm so excited and what was also really great okay so side note we're gonna learn something here today people this year I discovered something that is called yarn sub and um if you don't know what that is that's fine I'm about to tell you but it also sounds weird it's a website, um, and so what you can do is you can put in, if you see a pattern that you really want to make and the yarn that it was done in is like really out of your budget and like you just don't have the funds to do it or you would prefer not to use that yarn or whatever, but you don't know what exactly would be a similar yarn, you can use Yarn Sub. And so you can go and you can put in the, the yarn that you're wanting to substitute for um, and it will give you a list of yarns that are similar, so are substitutions, um, hence the name, and it will tell you how it is like it in regards to the ply, the fiber cont content, the yardage, the price, the colors, the drape, like everything. Also, this is not sponsored whatsoever. I'm just like really excited. I have used this website a lot this year. Um, so... I was very excited to see that the yarn that Thea Coleman had used for this sweater, the the when I plugged it into Yarn Sub, the most alike yarn that was also pretty cheap was the Nitpick Simply Wool Worsted. And it's like, it's now on sale. Oh! So we took advantage of that, and we are going to get a wonderful, beautiful, cabled fisherman's knit sweater for a pretty good price, thanks to the sale. Thanks, Knit Picks. Thanks for pulling through. That was wonderful. I'm very excited. So that yarn should be coming in soon, and so I wanted to get my nurture sweater done um, so I wouldn't feel bad <laughs> casting something on, and my needles will be free because... I think it calls for a 7, but I'm planning on using an 8, so. Also, side note, you start with the pockets, you make the pockets first, and you use that as a swatch. How brilliant is that? 
Thank you, Thea Coleman, for writing beautifully written patterns. I'm just so excited. I haven't knit one of her patterns in forever. I'm very excited. Have I mentioned that I'm very excited? Because I'm very excited. <laughs> so that was another, like, encouraging force, whatever you want to call it. This is a very technical hand term, hand movement, if you will, um, to describe that uh, to get my nurtured sweater done. It also helped that I needed a languishing whip and there's stash dash and the whole sweater thing of the year. So this is my Zweig. <laughs> going back to what I was originally talking about. That's my Zweig. Um, this is going to be my new work in progress probably until the Oban yarn arrives in which case I'm casting that on and I'm casting it on the minute I can get that yarn wound. I will not feel bad. I want to wear it in the fall and I will get it done so it can be sweater number 13, you know, as you do. It probably won't get done, but you know what? High hopes, shoot for the stars. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. That's okay, I'll just wear it at Christmas time because hopefully I'll get it done by Christmas time. Because we don't want to have any languishing whips from this year because the goal is to get all the languishing whips done. You know, so Whew. I feel like I ranted about that for quite a while. I think it's time for a tea break or iced tea. I should say it's not hot tea unless you're drinking hot tea, in which case more power to you. <laughs> As I have been taking a slight recording break and just browsing the Instagram as you do, I discovered another test knit that I would really love to do. That's not a sweater, and that's okay. That's totally okay. I really want to. Like, this is another um, pattern from Rachel, who just designed the the Jensen pullover that I knit. Like, how beautiful is that? I want to make it. I have stash. It would work. Oh, everybody! Oh, everybody! Do I do it? Do I not? I don't know. I really want to. Oh man. Oh man, these are the questions that you have to ask yourself. What to do, what to do. Um, <clears throat> so, also, what am I going to say? Uh, also, why say also? Next up, in the knitting, in the knitting world, in my knitting world, more specifically, in my living in my happy bag, is my diving in shawl by Mamzelle Flo, um, which I had to go back very far in my show notes to find my links that I had already put together, um, like back in October. It was so far away. Um, anyway, this is my diving in shawl. Ta-da! And if you saw last week, you might be wondering where is my little progress keeper? This I put, I, so it was like down here, I did like a lot of progress last week and so I moved it up after recording and this is all I've gotten done, but it's still quite a lot. You know, it's still a lot. Plus I'm striping and the goal is to stripe until I have no more gray and then I will be just knitting with the black. Um, this is a recipe. It's a free pattern and um, I would highly recommend you checking it out. It's very easy. I have changed the pattern slightly because I wasn't a fan of how they were doing their stripes. Nothing bad on the pattern. It's just not what I was looking for. Excuse me. And um, it has a pico bind off which was also kind of like a big selling point for me. This is um, yarn that my parents picked up for me when they went to Europe last year in October. This is from La Amore. Again, I apologize. My pronunciation is not correct. Um, my gray yarn is their Ariana base in the Nuage and the Val, Air Naval, something like that with the tweed. That's the gray which I'm almost out of and I'm not going to pick up because I'm afraid my little cake of yarn will fall apart and become one tangled mess and we don't want to get it that. And then the other one is on the Cassiope um, base in the Black Friday colorway. 
I love their yarn so much, I want to knit with it more and all the time. But shipping is a thing if you live in America. And the yarn is from overseas, it, shipping is an issue. If you have a yarn budget, you know? Because you've got to factor that in, unfortunately. Um, there's, there's no way around it, it's just the fact of life, but that's okay. Um, so yes, side note, so this is where we get into my movie recommendation. Because I worked on this on the movie, in the movie theater on Thursday. This was my movie theater knitting, which is why I got so much done. Everybody, please go see The Lion King. Just please go see The Lion King. Um, I would I would totally understand if you said, I've seen the original. I have seen the original to no end. Some people would say that they have watched their VHS tape of The Lion King so much that it kind of disintegrated. And so you know the story pretty well. You've listened to the music a lot. You understand. And so you probably would say, why would I want to watch the same movie that I've seen that just now happens to be live action? Live action because it's all CGI, but why? One, it's beautiful. Two, it's hilarious. Three, it's classic Disney music sung by new people. And it's amazing. And four, it's just a good movie. <laughs> and five, it's just fun to go to the movies. It's fun to go and watch movies. Um, so yes, that is what we went to go see. Um, my sister and her husband came into town. It was a very last minute thing to celebrate my brother's birthday, which is super fun. And so there were lots of last minute plans made and it was wonderful and a lot of fun and I already said that um but the going to see the Lion King was one of them and it was a blast and everybody one thing that I was worried about was just like how were they going to portray Timon and Pumbaa and how can you get better than the original and it's like are they gonna be as funny and let me tell you, they were even more funny than I thought they were going to be. Like, they were absolutely hysterical, and I love them. Granted, the original one is still amazing. It still has a very special play place in my heart, and I'm sure in everybody's hearts. But this new version, this new rendition, is just truly incredible. Also, what they can do with computers and... CGI to make such real looking animals is insane. Like, it's just mind blowing. And it's just so incredible. And it's just a beautiful movie. So please go see it. <laughs> if you are wanting to go see a movie sometime soon, this weekend, tomorrow, tonight, I don't know, consider The Lion King if you're on the fence. It's really good. I would highly recommend it. Also, if you can knit in the movie theater, it just makes the experience that much greater. And if not, that's also okay. In which case, you can probably focus more on the movie um, and not constantly be looking if you need to decrease or increase or whatever. Or if your yarn has gotten tangled, like I was. It's my yarn on my tea. It's close, but that's okay. So yes, I'm just striping to my little heart's content until I run out of the gray, which is getting close. Um, my rows are insanely long, but that's okay. Again, that's fine. Here, let me see if I can kind of show this to you. Ah! I just don't want this to fall apart because it has a tendency. This is how much I have left of the gray. I was wondering if I should just stop with the gray and not use all the gray, but I don't know, I really want to use all the gray. So yes, now having shown you this, I'm going to move this little guy up here, and so we'll see where I get ne to next week. Um, uh, do I have any knitting events coming up? Or things that I can knit at? I don't know. We'll make it work. We'll make it work. So yes, this is Diving In, a recipe by Mademoiselle Flo. Um, would highly recommend it. It's a very good, like, basic pattern. Um, and again, I changed it slightly just because I wanted my stripes to look a little different, but 
Again, it's a recipe. That's why it's a recipe. But I'm very excited to get to the all black portion, which I know some people will be like, why would you want to knit with just black? That sounds terrible. But this black has sparkle in it, everybody. And it's just so beautiful. And it's just, just so amazing. I'm very excited about this. I think it'll be a really fun and like good shawl for the fall because it is darker. I don't really have any shawls that are in dark colors. I have mm, a couple of them are in neutral, neutrally colors. I should probably fix that. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, this is exciting. Moving forward with that, that's another languishing whip. Like I said, I probably cast that on in October or November. Um, it's very old. But yes, so that is my knitting. We're going to move on quickly to a book recommendation. I'm not going to go into this super detail. Um, but so I just finished listening to a book called I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lahan. And um, it's historical fiction, kind of, but also like just retelling the story of Anastasia and the Romanovs after they get um, taken prison. Taken in prison? They are prisoners. Um, and so everything that happens while they're... I now can't remember any of the names that they were, where they were, but that's okay. Like, the later half of their life, very close to them being, um, killed. This is very uplifting, clearly. But, so, it's very interesting because it switches between two timelines, basically. We have the Anastasia's timeline, um, in the 19, 1918, um, uh, executed, that's the word I was looking for, <laughs> uh, leading up to the time where they, and when the family was executed, and then, <clears throat> excuse me, the other timeline bounces around quite a lot, but it tells the story of someone named Anna Anderson, which I am not super familiar with Anna Anderson, but she was someone who, uh, like, played the part of Anastasia, and people thought that she was, sur like, Anastasia who had survived, um, and it was just, fascinating to hear, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> these allergies, I'm sorry. It was just a, a very interesting take on the whole situation and I, again, I didn't know very much about Anna Anderson so I thought that was very fascinating. Um, also the, the author's note at the end, I don't normally listen to or read author's notes and I know that's a really bad thing I should, but um, I was driving at the time when it finished and so I didn't really want to like start something new because I was driving at the time and so I just let it play through and it actually really enhanced the story for me so if you do happen to read it or listen to it I really hi highly recommend listening or reading that uh, to the author's note um again it's called I Was Anastasia by Ariel Lahan it was very good I did have to wait like more than six months for my library's copy to come in so I don't know how if you're getting it from your library how long it will be for you um this is what the cover looks like this is me on Goodreads I was Anastasia by Ariel Mahan I really enjoyed it it was very good I would highly recommend it I know um if you read the, the reviews on Goodreads, obviously you're going to get some good ones, some bad ones. Everyone has their, their preference. Don't take what I say as law. Read it for yourself if you're interested in the Romanovs. I find them personally very, very fascinating and just fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would highly recommend it if you're into historical fiction or just any kind of historical stuff that has to do with royal families would highly recommend it please go read it it was very good um, so that is my book recommendation I'm sorry I haven't had one in a while but if uh, 
not all the books that I read or listen to I feel like I should share them necessarily on the podcast on the podcast just because they're not like incredible I didn't find them groundbreaking but I found that one groundbreaking so that's why I share wanted to share it with you if you're into or if you want to keep up to date with what I read on a regular basis you can follow me on Goodreads because I have to update that all the time um so if you want to do that then it should be in the show notes so so that is all that I have for this week um, in regards to knitting. It was a pretty productive week, if I do say so myself. We got a lot done, um, made plans for new stuff, made room for new stuff, very excited, read good books, drank good iced tea today, <laughs> um, watched good movies, had fun family time. It's been, it's been a very good week. Um, so with that, as always, all the social medias, please go follow me over on there if you would like to. If not, that is totally fine. You are not obligated and it will not hurt my feelings. Um, if you would like to f see any of the links or hopefully the stuff that I've talked about, they will hopefully be linked in the show notes. And you can go check them out on my blog or if you're on YouTube, the link to my blog will be down below. In addition to that, all of the sore information for the Modern Skein and for Trico will be in the show notes and everywhere. So please go check us out and Allison out. Um, just good things all around. Um, I hope you've had a wonderful weekend and I hope you continue to have a wonderful week. If you have crafty plans, I hope that they are successful. Um, whether you are trying to get all your languishing whips done or your sweaters done or if you're already starting on Christmas crafting, which I um, take my hat off to you for that one. Um, I should do that, but I just, I just haven't. I really should, but I haven't. That's another time, a discussion for another time, I should say. But if you're doing any of those things, I hope that they are successful and you feel good about the progress that you make. If you're test setting, I hope you're doing well with your deadlines and stuff like that. Um, yes. That, is, that has been said. What else is there to say? I don't really know. I just, I feel like there's, I, I don't know. I just want to cast on all the things, but I also don't want to cast on all the things. And there's also like very specific things that I want to cast on, which I think is very interesting. I don't know. That was kind of random, but I just wanted to share. So now you know. I want to cast on all the things, but sometimes there are very specific things. Um, thank you so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, spending some of your time with me. I know there are a lot of other knitting podcasts out there, so I appreciate that you pick mine to watch. That means a lot. Thank you for your comments, your likes, your subscribes, Instagram comments, good read follows, book suggestions, anything. Also telling me what your number was last week because that was pretty awesome. I do appreciate that. Um, that's always fun. Gotta love the Enneagram number numbers. Um, so, that all being said, that is all that I have for this week. And I will see you guys next week. Bye!